Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this uh, what I consider a special day. I know you do too, but, and I thank you for that, but I will talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but welcome on this, uh, what is it, the second or third, third Sunday now in, <coughs> after Pentecost. And I hope your summer is going well. The garden is mostly in. And uh, I still have some stuff to do around the yard. And uh, uh, we're proceeding pretty well, I think. Uh, we just had Senate Assembly last week. And speaking of the Senate, we have a guest today. She doesn't have a very big part of the service, and that's my fault. Um, but uh, she'll talk about how she feels about that. <laughs> Deacon Laura Carson. And uh, in this sense, the Deacon serves as the assistant to the bishop, one of, one of the assistants to the bishop of the uh, Eastern North Dakota Senate. And uh, so she was there at the Senate Assembly, and uh, I was there, and we will be having a report, I guess, forthcoming on that. But um, looking at the announcements for this day, we will have a pop-up uh, uh, dinner and a uh, cake and coffee after the uh, service. So please do stay and enjoy that time of uh, food and fellowship. The Wednesday, regular Wednesday schedule now is, is uh, just simply to watch for the uh, midweek devotional video on Facebook or uh, YouTube. And uh, then this week, it's the uh, monthly thing of the council meeting uh, at 3 o'clock and uh, WELCA meeting at 4.30. You remember those listed on our prayer concerns, as well as those who have been added this week from family and friends of Merrill Fossey and the family and friends of Cameron Bundy. So uh, thank you uh, for those who have offered up those uh, prayers and requests. The nice bucket offering today goes to our uh, joint uh, ministry now, camping ministry for Red Willow and Park River Bible Camps. As we're in session now for the summer, and that's a good thing for the young people, and uh, they appreciate your gifts. We will uh, proceed now with our service of Holy Communion, and we begin with the order for confession and forgiveness on page 56. Uh, please rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say we have no uh, sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn, number 252, You Servants of God. Thank you.
on the front of the celebrate folder. <coughs>
from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who gave you gave to me <coughs> gave it the fruit to me from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The servant tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the servant, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and amid all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Our responsive psalm is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my salvation. If you were to keep watch over sin, O Lord, who could stand? Yet that the Jew is forgiveness, in order that you may be here. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits, and your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who be watched in the morning. More than those who be watched in the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. For the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall be Israel from all of his sins. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians 4, 13, 5, 1. Life in the present is transitory and cannot compare with the eternal home that God has prepared for us. So we do not, so we do not despair no matter what life might bring because we know that God has raised Jesus from the dead. God promises to bring us into eternal life. Just as we have this same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believe, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, for that grace that is extended to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house made more, hands eternal in the heavens. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. 
but no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was stirring around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my bro mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my mother, brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord. because of the white hair, <laughs> but it's all come to, to all of us, I think. But uh, who let that old fellow in? Uh, it, it makes me feel old <coughs> and see myself, uh, as, uh, not as I used to be. If you see downstairs, there's a book that's got a few pictures from 40 years ago, the time of my ordination, and my hair was dark, quite dark. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, uh, somebody else had mentioned that, uh, that you sure don't look the same. <laughs> it's true. Uh, that is quite true. And I also feel older when I get together with my colleagues at conference pastors meetings and they start sharing stories of their ministry and most of them now have stories of people uh, that really haven't started serving like in the synod office or other places that long ago and then I start uh, uh, telling stories about like a man named Nelson Price I don't know if anybody here remembers Nelson Price. Some of you are old enough to remember him. Uh, he was the bishop of the, well, he wasn't a bishop. He was the district president. We didn't call them in the ALC. We didn't call them uh, bishops back then. Uh, but district president of the Eastern North Dakota district. 
when I started and then we became the ELCA when I was like uh, about three years in, four years into my, uh, my ministry. Uh, and then we started having bishops. And, uh, we'll talk about deacons in just a minute. <laughs> but um, we, uh, it, uh, it, it makes me feel older. Uh, and, and I've seen over the 40 years now a lot of changes in the, uh, in the church and uh, things we did uh, do differently now that we did uh, uh, not do back then. Uh, one of the things, and this is why I'm glad that Laura is here today, uh, one of the things is deacons. Uh, deacons, now when I uh, <coughs> was starting to serve the church, it was very common in the constitutions of every congregation, and I'm sure you can look back and see the constitution of this congregation, no doubt had a constitution that had laid out the uh, structure of the council. The council in a congregation like here in Michigan or at United and Crockett, uh, I remember that one well, that uh, the, the uh, council was made up of three boards. The trustees, and they tended to be the officers of the congregation and they handled the, uh, they dealt with the money issues, the property, uh, and building and grounds and such. The second was the actually probably third, was the Board of Education. And they uh, made sure that the Sunday School Confirmation programs ran smoothly and well. Then the uh, last one was the Board of Deacons. Now their, their uh, roles were a bit more esoteric, more um, vague as far as, uh, they dealt with membership and no doubt discipline and uh, uh, made sure that everything was on the up and up with the uh, life and the morals of the uh, clergy and the staff and all the people that worked at the church and the, but the membership and you can imagine you can if you will perhaps um, maybe on a council of nine Three grumpy old men <laughs> were the gate, gate, gatekeepers. Okay, you might say they would, they could easily decide who's in and who's out. Of course, in small rural churches, who, who dares to say somebody's out, except for uh, cases of what they used to call moral turpitude or uh, whatever. But um, like gatekeepers. Well, you know, that's what these scribes and Pharisees, that's, that's kind of the function they, uh, they, they held or felt they held in the uh, faith and the religion in Jesus' day of first century Israel. Uh, and, and they, of course, could go around making uh, what we would say today and becoming, unfortunately, more common for some uh, wild accusations, false information, fake news, uh, whatever you might say, but they were going around saying Jesus has a demon because he was going around breaking all the rules. He was healing and casting out demons and doing good works on the Sabbath. Uh, and you're not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath, of course, uh, not even good stuff. Uh, well, Jesus called uh, them to uh, account on that and said, would you even drag your oxen out of a pit on uh, Sabbath? But uh, they were uh, against Jesus because he was becoming too popular. He was upsetting the natural order, they felt. 
and uh, the structures of their uh, church, their religion. And so uh, it was not a thing to be uh, uh, dealt with lightly, but rather strictly and sternly. And so they are railing against him with all these accusations. And so Jesus had to educate them on that. Um, but they were gatekeepers, and, and they, you can imagine them easily saying about just normal people, not even uh, rabbis, teachers like Jesus, about, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not living rightly. Don't bother coming to church or darken the door with your presence because you're not doing the right things. And uh, so that's uh, never sat well with Jesus because Jesus saw people of faith as his brothers and sisters, as we see from his own words. He saw the religious family of God, those who wanted to believe, those who were seeking God out and doing everything they could to attend worship, to take part, to pray, to maintain a spiritual life. He saw them as his family and welcomed them with open arms and uh, a generous heart. And that's the sort of Jesus I've always wanted to serve. That's the sort of uh, fellowship I wanted to uh, encourage and maintain wherever we, uh, wherever I have gone and uh, wherever we've gathered for worship is uh, I wanted to make sure everyone understood that we're all children of God and that we all share the same uh, Heavenly Father and the brother in Jesus, of course. Uh, so that uh, is, uh, and I think, the hallmark of uh, uh, my ministry, now I'm not saying that I'm doing perfectly at that. Uh, and that's another thing I wanted to say. I did not mention to the council this 40th anniversary here uh, so that we could have a Pastor Mark day and, and make a you know, big show of it. Uh, and that's fine and I appreciate everything that you're doing today. Um, but I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to say thank you. Uh, thank you, first of all, to this congregation for providing me uh, a good place to uh, exercise my ministry in the, probably the last regular place I will serve. I'm pretty sure at this point. But uh, never say never, I guess. <laughs> right. Um, but also, I want to thank uh, the uh, Synod for uh, always being there and uh, affirming and uh, certifying uh, my ministry wherever I've gone. Um, and it has been fairly continuous. I'm, I'm really surprised. I, um, if you see pictures downstairs in the little booklet, the first few pictures are going to be pictures of the ordination day in Zorkota, Minnesota. And some pictures from the service itself. I don't know how they got away with taking flash photos uh, during the service. Maybe it was staged, I don't remember. Uh, the laying out of hands. Um, but you'll see three pastors besides the newly minted pastor uh, in that pic those pictures. 
uh, two older gentlemen, um, one bearded. He was the senior pastor at that church, United Redeemer, in Sombrota, Minnesota. The, the, the next uh, one with darker hair was my confirmation pastor, who first suggested to me uh, about ministry. And he, he was actually representing the, uh, uh, the AOC back then, uh, uh, as far as the ordination. And then an arm. <laughs> reaching in, I'm putting his hand on my head. Uh, that was this, the, the associate pastor of that church. Uh, <coughs> it wasn't my classmate, I think it was a year before or two before me in seminary. Uh, and his name is Gary Lundberg. And he is currently the uh, pastor at Cooperstown. And I shared with him, I was uh, visiting with him at uh, assembly and and he talked about his journey in ministry and um, because of spousal employment and other uh, things uh, he hadn't been blessed with a uh, straight run but had some vocations where he was doing other things and in this world you know that's not an uncommon thing but to have a 40 year straight run and when you you know put that together with me going right into college the summer I graduated from high school. You know, it's kind of like, where was your break? <laughs> Maybe you should take a sabbatical. Uh, but I think it must have been something instilled by my dad on how you should always have a job and always be employed and doing something worthwhile. And, uh, I'm very thankful uh, to the people of each congregation. I didn't want to, I don't want to leave anyone out uh, this day. Uh, all the many congregations that I've served. I, don't know, I guess maybe it wasn't that many, but it seemed like a lot. And um, then to the Synod and also to God for calling me. And uh, though I haven't been perfect, and there are some, I, I've, I've been I've been so blessed that um, uh, I've always had a welcome. At least at first, <laughs> I've always had a welcome. Uh, and uh, that I've had overwhelming support, I think, from each congregation. And, and just in a very few congregations, there were maybe one or two people that just took it against me. I don't know why. I, I just don't, maybe they didn't do something right. Maybe they weren't having a good year, or uh, maybe I offended in some way, or maybe I missed opportunities to connect with them that I didn't uh, take. So, I, like I said, I'm not perfect, and I ask God to forgive me for those times when I've fallen down or missed out. Uh, but overwhelmingly, I thank the congregations for being very supportive and very strengthening and affirming. And that welcome, though, that uh, we all should extend not just to pastors, but to everyone who comes to church, that everyone is valued and welcomed like a member of the family. It's something Jesus wants us to do. But I remember, and it was in uh, one of those smaller congregations of my journey. It was in Lawton, uh, North Dakota. And uh, just over that way, I think. <laughs> uh, but um, in Lawton, the day I was installed, uh, we had ins installations at both churches, Brockett and Lawton. And when we got to Lawton, we had an installation there. And at the end, or near the end, they, uh, they clapped, they applauded. And one a little girl 
uh, she must have got kind of confused uh, about the occasion. And, and when everybody applauded, she shouted, we win! <laughs> 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 so I'm very thankful. And uh, um, I don't know what more to say. <laughs> but, uh, you know, extend, oh, I know what more. Uh, extend that same welcome and that same love. And uh, embrace and hospitality to everyone because we're all members of God's family. And now, you, you know, it is a loser and occasion, I guess, but uh, it was just on the list of recommended hymns. 229. And let's, uh, I think there are five verses, let's say one, three, and five of uh, this one, because it's big and long. Two from <laughs> Whether it's congregation anniversaries or 
past our anniversaries, a variety of things like that. It's such a joy to be here. I bring you all greetings on behalf of our bishop, Bishop Tessin and Lisa, who um, was just here with you all in January. This is wonderful that you, you get two visits in one year from people from the Senate office. Um, and I heard such delightful things uh, from Bishop Tessa. She came back and said, it was so wonderful to be with the people at Michigan Lutheran and to be here on your annual meeting Sunday. She has not been at a church yet for an annual meeting Sunday, and now she wants to. <laughs> She's decided every year she wants to be at a church with an annual meeting uh, because it was delightful. So good job <laughs> uh, for that. Also, uh, on behalf of the bishop, I am here to say congratulations and thank you for your 40 years of ministry. And keep in mind um, that when, uh, you know, it is quite a journey to become a pastor of education and training and formation, um, and then serving for 40 years. And when someone is serving, it's not just one congregation, but so many congregations um, that are blessed because someone is ordained on behalf of the ELCA to carry out um, their ministry. Now, Pastor Mark asked that I share since I'm a deacon, and he shared about deacons, and, you know, now that I'm in a synod office, I do feel like a scribe sometimes, and the one making sure rules are being followed <laughs> and such. That's not normally uh, what a deacon is. Deacons have actually, um, as a roster in the ELC, only been around since 2016, and I've been serving the ministry longer than that, uh, but officially a deacon since 2016, but before was an associate in ministry, serving in the church. Um, deacons are ministers of word and service, um, and we say that pastors are ministers of word and sacrament. So there's a different call. Deacons are ordained to um, serve the church through word and service, so some sort of service on behalf of the church and seeing our ministry in that context. Um, which often means deacons aren't necessarily the lead at a congregation because even though they may serve in congregations, because um, that is pastors of word and sacrament and their call to the sacraments um, for ministry. So there's just a little bit more. If you have uh, about that, if you have any questions, I'm happy, I'm always happy to talk about what it means to be a deacon and that's why my stole is diagonal, rather to show the difference um, in the ministry um, roles for that. So I'm going to offer um, first a scripture so I have my phone because I forgot to put it off. Try to stand in the right place. Or I will talk very loudly, <laughs> which I'm also good at because I have served in higher ages to get that to stay still. Straight up and down, thank you. See, there's a trick. Every church has a trick. Oh, good. Thank you. I always like it when I know people can hear me for sure. So a reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Pastor Mark, at your ordination, you made promises 40 years ago. You may have slightly changed the word, but it's similar to this of the promises that are made today. To carry out your ministry in accordance with the holy scriptures and creeds and confessions of this church. To be diligent in your study of scripture, faithful in your use of the means of grace. To pray for God's people and nourish them through worship and growth in faith, leading by example to give faithful witness to the world through word and deed so that God's love may be known in all that you do. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously gives you the strength and compassion to perform them. And we give thanks for your 40 years of ministry. And I'm going to invite you to stand. And this is a small enough church, so I'm going to make you walk back there towards them. <laughs> I know. We're going to make this difficult. And I'm going to invite you all to stand and to reach in. And you don't have to be the ones touching him. But if you're, like, touching a person next to you, it's a way that we can bless Pastor Mark, too.
Let us pray. Ever living God, strengthen and sustain Pastor Mark, who has faithfully served your church for 40 years. He has served this church with patience and understanding as he has loved and cared for your people. On this day, we offer gratitude for his life and his ministry among all of God's people. Continue to strengthen and guide him in his life and ministry. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to make you stay still for a minute because I want to take a picture of that because that was beautiful to see. So hold on. <laughs> I'm not as young as I might be forgetting the things quickly on the phone. Thank you. All right, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. And you will come again to glory, to judge us over the end of the day. And there is a kingdom of God and the land. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism and the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The prayers of intercession are on the back page of the uh, Celebrate folder. We come before the Triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. You reawaken our hearts to your mercy. We give you thanks for renewers of the church in every age, especially Columba, Aiden, and Bede, whom we commemorate today. 
Enliven the creativity and persistence of all seeking to transform the church into a closer vision of your beloved community. Merciful God, we see our prayers. Your presence is revealed in the shade of trees, the growth of seeds into flowers, and in the blessing of plants, granting food in their right season. Heal, heal lands scarred by deforestation, pollution, or infestation. Teach us to cultivate the earth with respect and reverence. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Our nations and communities are divided, O God. Teach us again to listen with curiosity and mercy, even in disagreement. Grant us the humility to acknowledge our hardness of heart and to and make us bold in modeling cooperation for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Hear the prayers of all who cry out to you from the depths of fear, despair, or hopelessness, especially those that we know and love and remember in our hearts. With haste, rescue victims of trafficking, exploitation, and abuse, and bless organizations and individuals who work on their behalf. Merciful God, receive our prayers. <laughs> Grant wisdom and clarity to all who are in seasons of discernment and transition. High school graduates preparing for first jobs or new educational journeys, those who are shifting careers, and those who are navigating changes in their relationships. Accompany them with your peace. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Praise to you for our ancestors in faith, who believed, spoke, and lived in you. Give us confidence that as Jesus was raised, so we too will be raised with all the saints into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to do a couple of things that we began in the pandemic. Uh, the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and greet them with a friendly wave. <laughs> but if you want to shake hands and kiss and hug, that's fine too at this point. The other thing is that we keep the uh, offering plate and the noisy bucket uh, on the table back by the door so people can put their offering in as they come in or go out. And thank you so much, all of you who support uh, the ministry in this of this congregation, and uh, with your generous gifts, and your prayers, and your wishes, and your involvement. We sing the offertory, let the vineyards be fruitful. <laughs>
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love, receiving them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord.
Can you please stand as you are able and we sing the post communion canticle on page 72. <laughs> Sixteen, we sing uh, on our way rejoicing. <laughs> 